All right, guys, so this is my official betting video for the first round Thursday games that are going to be happening. And then tomorrow, I'll probably do the Friday games. I have around eight bets total that I'm going to be talking about today. We're going to go through every single first round matchup that's happening on Thursday, along with... We'll throw in the first four you guys you guys are looking at right now. Southeast Missouri State taking on Texas A&M Corpus Christi. I'll be honest, I really don't have a have a recommendation when it comes to this game. I mean, these first four matchups are tough. You know, you've got Mississippi State taking on Pittsburgh, Mississippi State minus two and a half. If I was forced to pick something, I would say, you know what? After doing extensive Five and a half hour research nonstop. I would take Texas A&M Corpus Christi to cover the three and a half. Southeast Missouri State is terrible. And their name is hard to pronounce, folks. Let's be real. And then this game, I mean, Fairleigh Dickinson genuinely is horrible. I mean, I mean they really are bad. But Texas Southern is, four, is 14 and 20. And then Nevada and Arizona State, Arizona State minus two, flip a coin, folks. I don't know. I'll take Nevada, even though everyone thinks Nevada should have been left out. All right, guys, let's get to the actual game lines, the over-unders, the BPI. What is it all saying? The tournament kicks off Thursday at 12-15, the 8v9 game. It's West Virginia. It's Maryland. I like West Virginia to win this game personally, but it is an 8v9 game. The over-under at 137.5, I'd probably lean towards the under if I think that West Virginia is going to be controlling it. And the March Madness strategy to use is go with the unders early, go with the overs late. That's kind of the strategy with March Madness. It's not a perfect science, but I'll tell you what, I think Virginia... As much as I don't dislike Virginia, they got a really good draw playing at 1240 facing Furman. I really like the under 132 in that game. Virginia sitting minus five and a half. I think Furman upsets them, but I feel pretty strongly about the under 132. V Virginia, they play all their games are in the 50s. Let's just be honest. You've got Utah State and Missouri. I mean, after looking at some analytics, Missouri is just getting trounced in terms of the numbers. I, I think Utah State wins this game. They cover the one and a half. The BPI loves Utah State as a 10 seed, 61% chance. Missouri, you know, we'll have to see. It's almost like if Missouri wins as the 7 seed, it's an upset. I'll be honest, guys. I fill out my bracket on Sunday night. I'm looking at some of these numbers and these lines and I'm starting to feel like an NPC because it's like all my so-called upsets are already being predicted by the analytics. But so I, I am an analytics person, so like it, it kind of vibes like obviously I'm going to pick the frauds to lose or the teams the analytics doesn't like to lose, but still... I mean, like Virginia, a four seed, they're five and a half point favorites as a four seed against a 13. It's crazy. But I think every analytical thing I've said, you know, Utah State by three or more there. You've got the 1v16 game, Howard and Kansas, Kansas minus 22. I'm not touching that game with a 10 foot pole. We know Kansas is going to be up by 20 in the second half. The only question is, are they really going to go for the cover and win by 27 or not, I'll stay away from it. Charleston and San Diego State. San Diego State sitting minus five. I'll stay away from that game too. I think San Diego State wins, but it's going to be close. And Charleston is a team that, you know, 31-3. and three, They're very impressive. I know a lot of people are picking Charleston. I might be interested in the over. I realize San Diego State is a defensive team, but 141 for a game that's going to be really competitive, I don't know. Oh, I just got hit with some nasty deja vu. Sometimes that happens. just weird. Like this San Diego State Charleston 141. I feel like I said that before. I don't know. Uh, I have issues. But uh, moving on to the 410. So this is the mid-afternoon game. You have Princeton and Arizona. And this is a really good game time for Princeton. If you're hoping for a 2v15 upset, you know, I'll tell you, one of my big pet peeves with this ESPN thing, I don't care what their AP ranking is. Like, it says Arizona is 8th. 
Why don't you tell me it's a two, it's a two v fifteen matchup? Why would I care about their AP ranking at this point? But this is ESPN for you. The over under one fifty four and a half. Arizona minus fourteen. We expect Arizona to make a deep tournament run this year. Illinois and Arkansas. So this is another really fun eight v nine game. I love Arkansas. But they are the favorites, you would think. All these teams that are kind of very slight favorites, I don't think all of them are going to win. Inevitably, someone's going to lose. And I'm, I'm coming out and I'm saying I, I like Utah State as one and a half point favorites. I like Arkansas as two point favorites. I like Auburn as one point favorites. I feel like I'm being just uh, manipulated. I, I feel like this is, this is a very bot-like answer by me. And one of these games, the thing is, I don't know how Iowa as an eight seed got so screwed. They have to face Auburn in Birmingham. How does that happen? They're the eight seed. Auburn is the nine seed. Auburn is playing in Birmingham, Alabama. But I, I, get, I do like Auburn to win that game. It's basically a pick em. I'll take Auburn and I'll take Arkansas as well. They're two-point favorites. The Oral Roberts-Duke game, I love the over 146. Oral Roberts can score, and they don't have a good defense. Duke is a team I feel like in this tournament, this is like a seven, this is an 85-72 to 72 game that Duke wins. It's going to be close in the first half. Oral Roberts is going to have a lot of energy. It's an 85-72 type Duke victory. Colgate, Texas, that's a 7-25 game. I love the over in this one as well, 147.5. Colgate can score, they can shoot threes. I understand Texas is a really good defensive team, but this is a game where you could see Texas scoring 85 points maybe. Colgate gets in the 70s, and you get the over in that one as well. We're really relying on Colgate making their threes though if we want that one to go over. Next, we have Boise State and Northwestern. So I believe this line flipped. I want to say that Boise State was slight favorites, and now uh, money has seemingly come in on Northwestern. They are listed minus one and a half. I would stay away from this game. But I will say 128 is a low number for a game that should be competitive. Northern Kentucky taking on Houston in a 1v16 game. I like Houston minus 19 and a half. I'd probably say the over 122. It's just such a small number. But yeah, I, I think people are kind of underrating Houston right now. Houston is going to just annihilate Northern Kentucky. Probably like four. I, I'm thinking right now, I'm envisioning it. 77 to 49. That's the vision I just saw. Well, you know what? Maybe Houston had a game score like that or something because I'm envisioning that. Next, we have Tennessee and Louisiana. Certainly, I would think about taking Louisiana plus the 11. I believe Tennessee wins this game, but it's going to be close. Tennessee in March is a roller coaster. They've really struggled. That game will be close. Penn State and Texas A&M, that should be a fun game. A&M minus the three and a half. I mean, I, I would stay away from it, but I'm very intrigued with Penn State and the way they played in the Big Ten. But again, Texas A&M also played really well well in the SEC. People think they're underseeded as a seven seed. So who knows? And then UCLA and UNC Asheville. So I actually unveiled some things in my actual rankings earlier today, or really just like an hour ago. I don't know why I said earlier. It was like 30 minutes ago, but I did the video. UNC Asheville is an extension 16 seed. They are terrible. Get your money on UCLA minus the 17 and a half. This is a late night 10 o'clock start. UCLA's dropping in a hundred burger. The over 134 is a lock as well, guys. Get it on, get it on. And then you know what? Before I actually unveil my picks, I'm always good for a parlay. So somebody tell me how this parlay loses. This is kind of just a troll. But it is funny. I put this together. This is the NIT and the first round on Thursday. So the NIT, you've got Rutgers facing Hof Hofstra. I, I just hate that name. I just can't do it. Hol Hofstra. Hofstra. Rutgers, I, you know, I think they win that game. I don't know how they're only six-point favorites. Sam Houston State is four-point underdogs versus Santa Clara. Get it on Sam Houston State Moneyline. They're straight up better than Santa Clara, and they're playing at home. 
Oh, come, that's just disrespectful to Sam Houston State. Vanderbilt, I'll take a money line. I mean, Yale is... I know Yale was the one seed in the Ivy. I get it. But Vanderbilt is hot right now in the NIT. And then getting to the Thursday games, I'll take Arkansas money line versus Illinois. But that is... Listen, that's a toss-up. That's, you know, 50-50. I'll take Louisiana plus the 11 and a half. I'll take Duke to hold serve on the money line in the 5v12 game. I'll take the over in the... U UNC Asheville. I don't know. I just like forgot how to talk there for a second. I'll take the over in the UNC Asheville UCLA game, 134 and a half. And you know what? I'll take Houston University minus 19 and a half versus the 16 seed Northern Kentucky. And then also I'll take Auburn in basically a pick 'em versus Iowa, but it's a home game for Auburn. And then Utah State versus Missouri the 10 v 7 matchup there. So I wonder how much I would actually win and lose in that in, in terms of those 10 picks. I wonder what the final result would be. And then these are more analytical pro projections. I'm just going to kind of roll through these. So this is officially the Thursday slate. You have Houston right around 18 point favorites over Northern Kentucky. They're projected to win. Looks like 70 to 52. UCLA, 18-point favorites over UNC Asheville. Tennessee, 12-point favorites over Louisiana. Texas, 14-point favorites over Colgate. Arizona sitting minus 13.5 versus Princeton. You've got Kansas sitting minus 19 versus Howard. You have San Diego State, 9-point favorites over Charleston. You've got Duke only minus 4, 4-point four favorites over Oral Roberts. Utah State, the 10 seed, they're two-point favorites over Missouri. You have Maryland, about one point, basically a pick 'em game. Maryland, West Virginia, 8v9 game. Auburn sitting minus two versus Iowa in that 8v9 game. You've got Texas A&M minus two versus Penn State in the 7v10. Another 8v9 game, Arkansas sitting minus three versus Illinois. You have Virginia minus four versus Furman. And then you have Boise State minus one versus the seven seed there in Northwestern. And then here are my actual Thursday picks. You've got Furman versus Virginia, the under 132 and a half. The fact that this game is on at noon, Virginia, listen, Virginia's last game was 59 to 49. Whether they win or they lose, it's low scoring. This over-under should be like 125. It's far too high. I'll take the under 132.5. Utah State, we like them. Minus 1.5 versus Missouri. We're going to trust the analytics. Trust the numbers. We expect Utah State to win that game. Arkansas minus 2 versus Illinois. I like Arkansas to win that game. Oral Roberts versus Duke. We're going the over 146.5. I expect at least 80 points from Duke. If Duke hits the 80 mark... The over is a lock. Colgate versus Texas. The over 47 and a half. I like Colgate. Their three-point shooting overall on offense combined with some not-so-good defense. Texas possibly getting up in this game. Colgate trying to come back. Give me the over 147 and a half. I'll take Houston minus the 19 and a half versus Northern Kentucky. I think they win that game by around 28 points. Louisiana plus the 11 and a half versus Tennessee. Tennessee struggling in the tournament every year. And then we'll go UNC Asheville versus UCLA, the late night game. I like the over 134.5. I like UCLA minus 17.5 in that one. So those are just my overall picks on Thursday. And then just to end it out, let's look at the big time NIT games tonight. Liberty Villanova, I have no clue how. This is a first round game. Liberty sitting minus two there. You've got Rutgers sitting minus five versus Hofstra. You have Mississippi State minus, okay, this is a first four game. So this is the, the field of 68. This is the tournament. True TV, 9-10. Mississippi State, one and a half point favorites over Pittsburgh. 
Back to the NIT, you've got Michigan minus five over Toledo. They're going to be playing at home. UAB, seven-point favorites, almost eight-point favorites over Southern Miss. Washington State sitting minus eight versus Eastern Washington. You have Vanderbilt minus two versus Yale. You've got Colorado minus three versus Seton Hall. Wisconsin minus two. These are good NIT matchups, very competitive games. Wisconsin at home, minus two versus Bradley. And then the other, this is the first game of the tournament tonight. This is a 640 game, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. They're actually minus seven versus Southeast Missouri State in that one. So guys, those are just kind of my overall picks for the Thursday games in round one of the tournament here. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.